Good morning. I think I forgot to tell you uh, two, well, I couldn't tell you two days ago, but I could have told you yesterday. We had a group of blind people here. It was very special. And then a lot of beautiful things happened, which I'm not going to describe in full extent now. But we had a conversation. They were Israelis. And maybe, I don't know, a third might have been blind. They couldn't see. And we took them to the Magdala stone and took off the glass cover so they could feel all the, all the contours of the engravings on the rock. And then something very special happened after that we were in Dukan Altum and the <clears throat> guide was explaining different things and explained a word that we have today that they didn't realize. <laughs> it was a very interesting haha -ha moment. So the gospel today is actually located up in, in uh, here at um, Caesarea Philippi. Uh, it's about 40 kilometers directly north of here, but it's about an hour's drive. And it's a very important turning point in the gospel. And then the, the Book of Isaiah is the first reading in a very particular form, the suffering servant. And this is uh, uh, quite the challenge, obviously, for everybody at this moment. Jesus has been uh, through most of his public ministry at this time chapter 9 we're in chapter 8 so chapter 9 is going up to Jerusalem so he'll be in the direction then going from here to Jerusalem and he asks a very big question who do people say that I am this is the big question and they have all kinds of opinions Who do, they, who do they say that I am? And then he asks another question, who do you say that I am? And this is a very big question for the disciples. And Peter answers and he says, you are the Christ. This is the word we have in English. And there are a lot of issues we should talk about in that, in that story. And then as soon as that happens, Jesus, it's like a turning point in Mark's gospel. He starts talking about his suffering. And there's an interesting little comment in there. He said it loudly. He said it out loud. He wasn't in hiding. He wasn't keeping it secret anymore. He was going to say it out loud. Peter took him aside and he said, you can't die. You can't suffer. This is not the idea I have when I say that you are the Christ. So this is actually a word that our friends on Saturday had difficulty with because the guide said, uh, what, he asked the, the um, 
the Jewish people, many of them understood English. Um, actually, I think the whole conversation was in English. I forget, no, it was, com it was a combination, it was for, uh, Hebrew and English. And uh, they, um, they didn't know the meaning of the word uh, Christ, Christian. And they described as Christians to some extent, but they didn't, uh, they didn't uh, get it. They were saying, you know, these people who follow Jesus and everything. And she kept pushing for, tell me the meaning of the word Christ. And they didn't, didn't have the answer. And she said, it's, oh, I think there's one lady answered. And she said, it means Messiah. So that means then that the Christians are Messiah people. Isn't that amazing? For them, it was a discovery. <laughs> for us, we take it for granted. It's amazing how people code language. And that happens through many different influences. And when they heard the word uh, Messiah, a Christ as Messiah was a shock. Now, Peter, when he said, you are the Christ, he, he uh, understood the type of Messiah that was a military conqueror who would restore the people and throw off the Romans. And we see that coming up in Peter's conversation still for a long time. He even takes out a sword in Gethsemane. He will even deny Jesus three times. So he has an expectation that this Jesus must just not talk about suffering. That shouldn't be in the picture. And then it's very interesting what happens after this. Jesus rebukes Peter very severely and says, get behind me. And I heard a little interpretation about this the other day. And it means, be my disciple. Don't be out in front teaching me what to do. Recognize your place. Get behind me. And then he used the word Satan, which is also used at the temptations with the same idea because Satan was presenting opportunities for Jesus to be uh, this important person but he should leave Satan in the picture. And he was tempting him, even with the scriptures. So it's possible to tempt people with good things. And it's possible to have beautiful uh, attitudes to people, like saying, oh, no, no this, this shouldn't be true. It's like denying reality in order to come across nice and friendly. It's important also to be able to speak reality. To speak reality. And here in Mark's Gospel, it says he actually began to teach them, and he's continuing to teach them, and it's all the time he has to repeat it that he's going to suffer and die. What I find very beautiful is these four words. He spoke this openly. He's no longer in, in secret because he's beginning now to show, okay, the Messiah, but a Messiah who's going to suffer. And at this point, it's not going to be a lot of crowds probably until Palm Sunday. It's not going to be a lot of crowds until the crucifixion, the condemnation and crucifixion. So it's his, private, his disciples privately, and he's keeping a low profile because he's teaching them that it's a way of suffering. And they need to be faithful to him in this time, which they're put to a great test. But then they get re they're recovered. It's a very interesting moment. It's like a climax of all the teaching, who is Jesus? That's a very beautiful question. Who is Jesus? For us who are Christians, it's an important question for us to answer. Who is your mom? Who is your dad? Who is your brother? You can say quite a bit about them. What can you say about who is Jesus as a Christian? Who is Jesus? Who do you say that I am? I put in a little note there in my 
in the notes for the videos these last week or so with a connection for God Time. It's a podcast on Spotify. And Father Jaime, he's a Filipino priest. He does this on the on the um, uh, gospel today very beautifully. He has a wonderful way of asking this question and helping us to see how could we answer? How much could we say about Jesus? Could we spend two minutes describing him or would we be done with two words? How much time would you need to describe your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, your spouse, your children? Very interesting thought. We've got a paddle border coming our way. Who do you say that I am? And so then Jesus says, come follow me. You need to take up your cross every day and follow me. This is part of being my disciple. In other words, being a disciple is not just a head matter that I understand and I can say, but it's about actually also taking up our cross and following. So it's truly being a disciple, being one who follows, who goes along, who goes on the same path, who has the same lifestyle. Each one in their own circumstance. And for me, 50 years ago, this was the, the first time somebody saw me dressed like this 50 years ago. So some of us have this calling to follow in this way, but not everybody. It's not everybody's calling. It doesn't have to be. It's okay. Uh, everybody has their calling, and sometimes the cross for married people is very strong. Uh, the cross in different types of professions is very strong, in different types of political regimes. To be a disciple and follow Jesus is very challenging. The habit doesn't make the monk, <laughs> but it's a sign. It's a sign of life. It's a, a way of indicating publicly, making a public statement. It's also a point of recognition so people can know who you are. Uh, there are many different styles of religious habit, and they are uh, even here in Magdala, we don't wear the cassock because of the temperature. In these temperatures here, 40 degrees, it would uh, get so sticky and sweaty and it would be impossible. Uh, it would, would fall to pieces. <laughs> so we have, we wear a white shirt, uh, like many, um, religious people do in other countries in Brazil and in other hot countries but I just wanted to wear this morning so I told you about this yesterday uh, so 50 years ago today I was blessed to to start out this path very formally with the promises and to prepare to to serve to follow to prepare for the priesthood so 50 years ago I just wore this for the first time I was a novice I was a farming boy my hands were still used to milking cows and shearing sheep and making hay and all the rest of the work on the farm and then uh, it's a long path I'm still learning I'm still learning to live religious life 
still learning to live community life. It's always has its own challenges. It's great joys. It's great fraternity. And then uh, following Jesus, this is the key part. This is the key part to, to, um, to be with our Lord, uh, to learn, get to know him more, to walk through life with him like the disciples did in community. He didn't have a stone to lay his head. There's lots of stones here, so I couldn't say that. But I do have a pillow. And then to live uh, a celibate lifestyle. And we have a vow of chastity as well. And then a vow of obedience to be sent wherever the Lord requires our service, wherever the church needs us to serve. And the availability to do that. So we're not free agents. Uh, like the disciples were also sent out by the church. P Paul and Barnabas were the first ones sent out from Antioch to Cyprus. This was part of it. So this is part of the lifestyle. Just a couple of words. And I wish you many blessings of yours, Father Rodrigo. He has a different uniform on right now. As he comes out of the off the paddleboard. I didn't realize it was him. So he's finished up. He went out there rather early. I had finished my meditation and I came over to get ready before the live stream and he was already gone. Good. So we leave it like that for today. I wish you a blessed Sunday. I wish that you, each one of you, especially those who are Christian followers of Jesus, you can um, have some thoughts today, maybe even write down a few lines. Who is Jesus for you? Listen to that podcast of uh, God Time from Father Jaime. It's a very nice instructive how to do that. And everybody else say a prayer for us all Christians that we won't uh, be untrue to the calling, that we will serve as we are taught to be reconcilers, peacemakers, to be true servants of the poor, of the of the, in education, in healthcare, in so many other outreaches that the Christian communities do worldwide. And we pray for you. God bless you today.